Okay, let's see. Let's just take a look at the first example so that we know how to do examples one through six. What? Let's try to discover on this example what they did. They have triangle, RST, and they have these two acute angles in them. How many degrees does the whole triangle equal? It equals 180. So if all of those angles equal 180, then it would be angle R plus angle S plus angle T equals 180, right? All the angles add up to 180. And we know which angles? We know angle. Very good. So I would assume the next step would be to actually substitute that in. We know R and S. There it is. Substitute it in. And the next step, we need to solve for the measure of angle T, right? So we add up 25 and 30. We're going to subtract 60 to the right-hand side to get T by itself. And we find out that the measure of angle T equals 120. All right. Now looking at the next triangle, I try not to look at the answers. And I just want to see kind of what's going on on this. Let's see. We have a 90-degree angle. Hmm. Very interesting here. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm assuming we're looking for angle one, two, and three. Which one do you think is going to be easiest to look for first? Look in just the separate triangles. Which one? Which angle at C? One or two? Look inside the triangles. Which angle is going to be easiest to find first? One. Why one? So right on your calculator, it said it's 180. 180 subtracting 90 subtracting 58. And that will leave my third angle. 180 degrees minus the first angle, the second angle. And we see that that's going to be 32. All right. So we know this angle is 32. When I look at the second triangle, I'm like, what the heck's going on? How am I going to figure that out? Now, this is just like algebra where it's based on previous information. If I go like this, that's where we are right now. They have two intersecting lines. I know that this angle is 32. All right. What kind of angles are these? Vertical angles are... They're congruent. So I also know that in this picture, that angle two is also 32 because those are intersecting lines. So vertical angles are congruent, right? So I know that angle two is also 32. Can I figure out angle three? Some of the angles of a triangle are 180. So I would do 180 minus 108 minus 32. And I would find out that angle 3 equals 180 minus 32 minus 108. And we get that angle 3 is 40. So let's see what they did. Did they do the same thing that we did? They said, okay, uh, angle 1 plus angle A plus angle B equals 180. Same thing we did. We saw, hey, we want to solve for angle 1. They added up. 58 and 90, and then they subtracted that from 180 and got 32 as well. Is there any other way to do it other than vertical angles? No. You needed to get a number in that triangle. They did the same thing we did, vertical angles, and then again, they went through the same process that we did. So that's that. How do you like it? Not too bad, right? Okay, number one. I want you to answer number one and number two. Remember, we have markings now that tell us things in the pictures. Okay, who wants to tell me about number one? Exactly. So if all of the angles of the triangle are 180, all I need to do is subtract off the other two, and it will tell me the third one. Subtracting 62, subtracting 90. What'd you get? And so you wouldn't call this P1. Now that they're putting numbers on inside the triangle, you just call it angle one. So I'm going to say that angle one, would you say it was? 28? Everybody agree? 
And so this is how you can answer it now. Angle one equals 28. They're going to be putting numbers inside the triangle. So we don't have to be formal in naming it angle MPN or NPM. We can just call it angle one. Angle one is 28 degrees. Okay, Penny. Any ideas on number two? Stop right there. That's very important information right now. Did you recognize in the picture that they're making markings at angle Q and angle R? They have the same markings, and that means that these two angles are congruent then. They mark sides and they mark angles. So I know that this is 30. How did you know that was the same? You just knew it? That's good. So the markings tell us that that's 30. Okay, Penny, keep going. Exactly. So if the sum of the angles is 180, then I can subtract off 30 and I can subtract off 30. That's 160. So that would leave that angle one equals 120. Yes. So now we got to be looking inside the triangles and we got to be looking for markings that are going to help us find other angles. Okay. Number three. Now we've really got three triangles here. We've got two small ones and one large one. Boston, which triangle do you think? Name the triangle that you think that we should start in because you always have to have a starting place. Which Name the triangle that we're going to start in. Which one has – now name that triangle for me. WTU. Yes, because it has two angles in it, right? How much is this angle? And this one's 30, so what do I do to figure out the third one? Right? Yeah, well, that's why we're, this is just uh, your notes, right? We're practicing right now. You pick the right triangle to start in, and so that means I would do 180 degrees minus the 90-degree angle minus 30 degrees, 12, 120, 60 degrees. And did it ask us for that angle? Where is my paper? It says find the measure. It did. That was angle two. And so we know that angle two equals 60 degrees. Now where to? How do I interpret the information to get in the second triangle? I have 60 degrees. That's it. Kind of. Thomas, do you have any ideas how I can get in triangle VWT? There's a piece of information. Geometry is like there's a picture and you got to find the hidden information. What do you think, Boston? Okay, but there's no. That, that's true. I see what you're saying. Unfortunately, I can't think of it that way. There's no markings that told me anything's cut in half. Okay, so maybe they would have um, the two half circles up here if it was cut in half. But I don't see that, so I can't assume it. Okay. Bree, you want to try something? So how would I know that this angle is 90 degrees? What kind of, what is this right here called? It's a line, right? This is a line. And if I know 90 of it, how much would the other one be? 90. It's a linear pair. And I know that I can still use vertical angles, lines. So if this is 90, then I know this one is also 90. I wasn't guessing. I wasn't just looking at it. I'm thinking about a line that adds up to 180. Okay, here we go again. We know two of the angles. This is actually a good review for the midterm as well to keep saying this stuff. You're always looking for linear pairs that add up to 180. You're looking for vertical angles. You're looking for complements, supplements. All right, so that would be... 150 and 80 would be angle one equals 30 degrees. 180 minus 90 minus 60. Is that what you got? Yay, nay. Because you know how I am. I do my math wrong sometimes. Thank you. Okay, let's look at number four. What's that? One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Okay, which triangle is going to be easiest to start in? Yes. Correct. So go ahead and find that number. Would you get for angle one? 
56. By what rule? What's it called? You know how I like that language? Vertical angles are congruent. Very good. And so, therefore, I'm sure you found angle three pretty quick, too, right, Thomas? What'd you get for angle three? So that's 100 would be 80 minus 6 would be 74. Good job. All right, let's move on to now which one. Oh, we're not moving yet. We're going to still on some. Let's see. You guys got that. You got that. Let's try number five. Picture within a picture. Number five. All right, we got to find the easiest place to start. That's not right. That's supposed to be 60. I got all the angles. What? Well, where do I, I guess I should put some letters on this. S, W, T. Can you tell me what triangle that you were looking at first? Okay. And I only see one number in there. How'd you get another number in there? Because we got a linear pair here. Yeah. That's good. I agree. And so that would be 30. I agree. So we know that this one's 30. You use the linear pair to say 90 and 90 adds up to 180. Okay, now, oh, so over there we have that. That's where I was actually thinking to start first. Okay, so we did 180 minus 90 is 60 minus 30 is 30. You got 30 for that one? That can't be true. Oh, okay, so my math was bad. This one right here? I was going to say, because look, when I said 30, the first thing I saw was, hey, 1 plus 2 is supposed to be a right angle. Is it? 1 plus 2? 30 plus 60 is that right angle, 90? Right when I said 30, I was like, whoa, that's not right. Okay, so yeah, you just got to piece it together like that. All right, I think that's enough of this. Let's take a look at one more theorem that we have today. One more theorem. So really where we're working today is in your notes, all three of these theorems right here. The triangle theorem, that a right triangle has two angles that add up to 90. And this is the next one right here. This is called the exterior angle theorem. Looking at your condensed notes, we're on the right-hand side bottom. Okay, this is the one that we're working on right now, is the exterior angle theorem. And this theorem says that... Angle one is going to be this. Is this an interior angle or an exterior angle? Angle one. Is angle one interior or exterior? It's on the outside. So angle one is the exterior angle, and it equals the two angles that are opposite. When I add up A and B, that's going to tell me how much this exterior angle is right here. So angle one, you go across from it, and you add up the two angles across from it. So angle one equals the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B. That's the new theorem today, two of them. The sum of the angles of a triangle is 180, and the exterior angle equals the two remote interior angles added up together. Let's look at the first picture. Number one, we'll go right to the exercises. Angle one, I need to find the measure of angle one. It's an exterior angle. What is this exterior angle going to equal? What do I have to add up? Exactly. It equals these two ones over here being added up. So 65 plus 60. Angle 1 equals 11, 5. 115. I'm sorry. I was just thinking adding 6 and 5 and then 5. Okay. Go ahead and do number 2. So... The remote angle equals these two opposite ones added up. Try number two. Where should I start first on number two? What do you think? Angle one is called an, what's that vocab? Angle one is called an, very good, exterior angle. And angle one, yep. Angle one equals what? How do I find it? Exactly. I got to add up the angles that are opposite. Okay. Did you find angle two uh, as well? Yeah. 
How'd you find angle two? Um, Very good. We got a linear pair right here. We know that angle one, once I found angle one, I added up 25 and 35 and got 60. And then I know it's on a line. And a line adds up to 180. So 60 plus something that equals 180. 60 plus 120. 180 minus 60 will tell me that second angle. This is a line right here. It's a straight line. So we're looking for vertical angles. We're looking for linear pairs. All right. Now the next one's a little bit different. They put something on this next one. What do the markings mean on this? Annabelle, they're parallel. So they're telling us that we have parallel lines. That means we should be thinking about this. Every time we hear parallel lines and there's a line going through it, we have um, alternating exterior angles that are congruent. We have alternating interior angles that are congruent. We have corresponding angles in the same position that would be congruent. So every time we see parallel lines, we need to think about those rules from chapter three. Alternating interior, alternating exterior, corresponding angles, consecutive angles add up to 180. And again, those are in your chapter three notes. You could just flip right back and look at them. All right, so here's my picture. I gotta switch to a pencil because I know I'm gonna want to erase. And all my pencils, there it is. All right, so I'm gonna start with this one first and see if it gets me anywhere. For me, I'm a visual person and I need to be able to see it. So I'm gonna take these two parallel lines and I wanna extend them. I'm gonna erase after. And then I'm gonna take the transversal that's cutting those parallel lines. And I'm gonna look for any of those angles that I just mentioned. Can I find any of those angles on parallel lines? Parallel lines, there's the transversal. Do I have any alternating interior, alternating exterior? Corresponding angles. Okay. What's all the same thing? Tell me what rule gives me angle two. What rule tells me it's 60? What rule is going to tell me that it's 60? Right here, we have alternating interior angles. They're on the inside of the parallel, and they're alternating right here. Here's my parallels. They're on the inside of the parallel, and they're alternating on the transversal. So how much is angle one? Because it's also alternating on the inside of the transversals. Okay, so angle one equals 60 degrees. Angle two equals 60 degrees. What about angle three? How'd you know that? Oh, the triangle. Is that what you're saying? Did you use a triangle as your 180? What were you using? Where'd you get 180 from? Just curious, because there are there's more than one way to do these problems. I could have said, hey, there's a triangle, this is 60. And then I could have used a linear I pair. If you all at 60, so the two 60s would be the no 60. That's fine. Look at the angles that we have here. This is called what kind of angle? It's exterior. And what do we know about exterior angles? They equal the two in angles, remote interior, 60 and 60 is 120. Same answer you got, right? The exterior angle equals these two angles added up. Exterior angles. Did you get 120? Right, because you did 180 minus 60. I could have said, hey, this is a triangle, and a triangle adds up to 180, so I know that's 60. And then I could have said, hey, this is a line, 
180 minus that 60 gives me 120. So there's more than one way to think about this. Okay, let's try the next one. The picture starts to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, try to find something in there that you can put numbers in. Number four, and then we'll start homework. Oh, actually, we got to do five and six. Which angle is the first easiest one to find? Number one, because it has two angles in that triangle, right? If I look at the small triangle here, I mean the one that's right here, this triangle has 35 degrees, 36 degrees. I can find angle one, 180 minus 35 minus 36 is 109. Now where to, how can I use that information to get into another triangle? Remember, I'm always looking for vertical angles, lines. True. It's not in the triangle, but that is a true statement. You're always looking for vertical angles and straight lines. What do you got, Annabelle? So here's a line. 109 plus something equals 180, right? It's on a line. Straight line. Angle 1 plus angle 3 equals a straight line. So that's 180. For a straight line, 180 subtracting 109. Or thinking about it like, in, I'm sure she had to have used a straight line in there, though, to figure out that angle. 71 for this one. All right. Woo! How does that help me to get in the other triangle? Vertical angles. There's those crisscrossing lines. If that's 71, this side is 71, and it finally gives me another angle in the triangle to be able to use. Okay, number five and six with some algebra. Number five, I need an equation. It's got a variable. Every time there's a variable, you've got to think about what's equal to what. Do I add up something and set it equal to it? Do I set them equal to each other? What equals what here? We have an exterior angle. 145 is equal to what? The exterior angle is equal to these two angles being added up. What it says right here, if I look at my equation, look, there's an equal sign in it. The exterior angle equals the other two being added up. There's my equal sign. So that means that 145 equals 2x plus 95. Boom. Ready to solve. I need to make sure I read the directions so I don't lose points. What's the question asking for? Read the directions to me. Yep. And so what does number five say? Find the angle of, find the angle of ABC. It says find each measure. And number five says find the measure of angle ABC. Find the measure of angle ABC. A. To B to C. Do I know that angle? It says 2 times X. Do I know what X is? So that would be 2 times 25 then if I know what X is. So how much is that angle then? Yes. Angle ABC equals 50 degrees then. So remember, when you find X, it doesn't always mean you're done. you got to go back and read the directions. Okay, one more, number six. We have another exterior angle. Set up your equation. The exterior angle equals the two angles on the inside being added up. No matter how weird it looks, write it down. The exterior angle equals, just like this one, the exterior angle equals 2x plus 95. No. Thank you. Not yet. Boston, tell me how to set it up. What's the exterior angle? Okay, so that equals what? No. What's the theorem say about exterior angles right here? It says the exterior angle equals the other two angles being added up. There's our equation. 
what is that? What's the two interior ones? Yes, X plus X. Those are the two angles. No matter how funky it looks, just follow the formula. And now we're ready to start simplifying and solving. Penny, how would you start going at this equation? Exactly, one X plus one X equals two X. Boom, one more step to solve for X anyways. Half of 58, no, what did I say? 25 plus four. Yeah. And then I have to say to myself, did I answer the question? How much is angle F? Four point two homework.